Hi, this is Mike Benton for AllShadow.com, and today we're going to walk through setting up a Super Nintendo emulator on the Shadow. Many thanks to DJ Reveler for doing the footwork on this project. For more details, go to AllShadow.com, click on Forums in the right column, then the Hacks and Modifications Forum, and finally click on the thread titled SNES for Shadow FAC Install Guide. Okay, first things first, download the file pack that DJ Reveler put together from tinyurl.com slash 577NAE. Extract the file contents to your desktop and begin syncing your shadow. If you don't have the option to extract a rare file in your right click menu, you can get a free copy from rarelab.com slash download.htm. Next, you're going to want to connect and begin syncing your shadow so we can transfer the files. Using Windows Mobile Device Center, transfer the contents of the folder CABS to your shadow and install them both. If you have already installed the AllShadow.com performance enhancements, then you don't need to install the Surreal Network's App Unlock CAB. Instead, just install the TGET file CAB. When done, reboot your shadow. Once you've rebooted, connect and sync with your PC. Once synced, drag the folder marked SNES to your memory card. It's a little larger, so it might take a little bit longer to transfer. Once the folder is copied over to your shadow, navigate to the folder on your storage card using File Explorer. Then run the file marked pocketsnes.exe. Congratulations! You now have a working Super Nintendo emulator on your shadow. Now you're going to need to assign keys to work with your shadow's keypad. Do this by selecting Options in the emulator, then Keys from the menu. In order to assign a key, press left or right on the scroll wheel until that key is selected. Then press Center Select and you will see the alphanumeric code next to your selection change to three periods. Next press the key to you wish to assign. Be sure to assign them all and remember which is which. You can use this image as a reference for setting up your keypad. Additionally, I suggest going to Options and Display and selecting Portrait and Auto Frame Skip. Now there is a little more tweaking before you can load a ROM. With your shadow still synced using Windows Mobile Device Center, navigate back to the folder with SNES and make a new folder called Good ROMs or whatever you want. Then copy the ROMs inside the ROMs folder into the new folder you just created. Okay, so now it's time to load up a ROM. We we'll press File, Load ROM. You get a little pop-up message here. It's nothing to worry about. Just press OK. It'll come and go every so often. And uh, I loaded on a bunch of ROMs here, so there's a bunch to choose from. So let's check out Super Mario World. I'll get a little Nintendo Presents screen. And there's Super Mario World. Now I have this set up in Portrait so I can use the keys how we had laid out in the example. However, you can switch it in the settings over to landscape so you could play it like this. I have seen uh, a seems to be a problem when the landscape's oriented this way, so just use the first landscape mode. Now I had the bottom left key, the alt button, assigned to the menu key, and that's how you exit the game. Now you can go ahead and press file load ROM and load a different ROM if you want, or you can cancel if you'd like. Or additionally, you can go and change options, so you can play with the options in the middle of a game. So like if you want to try out playing with some of the sound, uh, you can try that out. And that concludes our tutorial for the SNES emulator for the T-Mobile Shadow. If you have any questions, check out our forums. There's a thread in there dedicated to the SNES. And until next time, I'm Mike Benton for AllShadow.com.